This story is about Brabant, a province in the Netherlands. Or to be more specific, it's about the future of our countryside. It's also about the future of urban development, because cities and the countryside grew towards each other and got tight. We want to untighten our province and give more room to initiatives that enhance the quality of our countryside. Simply applying our rules and regulations will not work. Effective and sustainable initiatives need our strong support. Centuries ago, our province looked quite different. It was sparsely populated and fertile soil was scarce. Rural life was tough and poverty was common. During the late 19th century, factories arose in cities and villages. This led to employment, prosperity and a big increase in population. People moved from the country to the rapidly expanding cities. But the farmer, he kept his hand on the plough. In the countryside, agricultural interests prevailed. Naturally, because agriculture was providing food for the province and far beyond. The government supported economies of scale, mechanization and export. The only survival strategy for farmers was to grow big, bigger, biggest. But this growth met with social resistance. Resistance against manure supplies, stench and epidemic outbreaks such as swine fever and Q fever. On top of that, the countryside is increasingly important for relaxing and enjoying the outdoors. Agricultural interests and social interests grew apart. Now, agriculture no longer prevails, but is one of many factors that influence decisions. The playing field has changed forever. As such, our policy has also changed, especially the way we collaborate. We want to develop our province as a place where people enjoy living, working and relaxing, and as a place where entrepreneurs want to settle down. Besides attractive cities, we need a vibrant and attractive countryside to accomplish this. This makes our province a top region for people to settle down happily, and that attracts companies and talent. How can we make cities and the countryside support each other? Not by providing ready-made solutions, but rather by finding the right solutions together. We need the right balance of the different interests. Sometimes this means taking a step back. By utilizing ideas, means and regulations in a smarter way, more possibilities come to light. For instance, a farmer wants to make her farm more friendly for nature and animals. To be profitable, her farm has to expand beyond what current regulations allow. In the new situation, we will make an exception for such a plan and do this quickly, so the initiative can take off. Or take a first-rate software company that wants to settle in the countryside, which is not allowed under the current regulations. By combining the construction of the small office building with a village social center or shop, the villagers get a new amenity in return. Another example is someone looking for new revenue opportunities for his estate, but he doesn't want to diminish the visual and ecological value of the property. In the meantime, the surrounding area has an urgent need for childcare. The estate is a fantastic place for this, but the current regulations prohibit it. By making an exception, the estate regains a future and the children can play safely outside. Of course, there are still laws and regulations to which everybody has to abide, and decisions should not be arbitrary. Nevertheless, our starting point is to give more room to the ideas and initiatives of the locals, because they very often lead to better solutions. From a government that primarily solves society's problems on its own, to a government that supports a society that solves its own problems. <laughs>